Hello everyone! Today we have prepared a very interesting video for you. Ants have always seemed identical to humans, like factory-made products. The uniformity in their appearance and behavior make it seems like ants lack everything that makes us individuals. Personal experience, intelligence, emotions, sympathies and antipathies, and the ability to make decisions. Insects were long considered beings entirely incapable of learning and even taking into account circumstances not encoded in their innate behavioral programs, instincts. This seemed particularly plausible in the case of ants and other insects leading similar lifestyles, because ants work not for themselves, but exclusively in the interests of the family. Today science knows of over 13,000 ants species. They live in forests and deserts, mountains and steppes, on the ground and underground, in three crowns and inside their trunks, in house walls and in gaps between curbstones. Some species don't even have a permanent residence and spend their entire lives on the move. And species vary gravely in size, shape, color, distinctive poses and movements. Even more, they differ in what they eat. However, they share one commonality. All ants, without exceptions, are social insects living in colonies ranging from a few dozen to several million individuals. The overwhelming majority of a colony consists of worker ants. The entire life of a worker ant is dedicated to the family and its interests. All worker ants are genetically female. They are incapable of mating and reproducing and are constantly engaged in some form of labor for the benefit of the ant colony. Collection food, building and rearranging the nest, cleaning up debris and caring for the lover. The food they gather does not belong to the ant itself. A significant portion is stored in liquid form, in the expanded esophagus. Our hero is always ready to share this food with any other ant that asks to be fed. This sharing can happen multiplied times. Experiments with isotopic markers have shown that food brought into the ant nest by one ant can be distributed among approximately 100 ants within 20 hours. In the same way, ants feed lava and the queen, the reproductive female. Even free lotus living in ant nests, such as beetle humpers, small parasitic ant species and others, regularly receive their portions of food by appropriately asking worker ants. In our experiment, we give ants a cube of sweet jelly to observe their behavior. It's truly a fascinating process. Any viewer of our channel can discover something new and special about ant behavior. In recent decades, scientists have developed methods allowing the strict study of the behavior of individual ants in their daily lives, both inside and outside the ant nest. The results of such studies have been entirely unexpected. It turns out that ants are not just capable of learning, they can even handle abstract ideas. For example, they can be trained to consistently choose a specific feeder, marked, for instance, with a triangle, over another geometric feature, regardless of the size, color or even shape of that triangle. It is known that when ants discover a sufficiently rich food source, such as a piece of sugar, they repeatedly come back to it. The same happens with a piece of jelly as discovered by our ants. Even more surprising in the fact that ants exhibit different personalities that influence their choice of professions. Generally, in social hemineopterans, to which ants belong, each individual usually changes several professions in its life. Right after emerging from the pupa, it works inside the nest as a nurse cleaner and then takes on guard duty at the nest in trance or nearby, transitioning into the ranks of food gatherers. In some ant species, skills develop further. Different professions require different body structures, and by the time the lava pupates, it is predetermined whether it will emerge as a soldier, nurse, or even a living barrel for storing sweet syrup. 
However, in most ant species, worker individuals can change their professions, not only with age, but also based on the needs of the colony and their own inclinations. For example, almost all adult ants go through a nursing profession, but the majority later move on to the other occupations, while some remain nurses for life. On the other hand, when scientists systematically removed nurses from certain nests in an experiment, some foragers returned to this professional and, in most cases, managed it successfully. As we know, ants are capable of lifting or carrying objects that are many times heavier than their own weight. When studying ants, more attention is usually given to the social aspects of their behavior rather than their phenomenal strength. Scientists from the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology in Japan and the Sorbonne in France decided to fill this scientific gap and find out the secret of ant strength. Specialists took X-ray images and created three-dimensional models of the thoracic cage of insects to analyze the structure of their bodies. As the research showed, losing the ability to fly made worker ants stronger. In flying insects, wing muscles occupy a significant portion of the thoracic cage, sometimes more than 50%. This means that less space is allocated to other muscles used to support and move the head, legs and abdomen. But as soon as ants lost the ability to fly, these muscles became larger and more efficient. Just look at how quickly the ants handled this piece of jelly. This is thanks to their amazing ability to share food. I hope you found our video interesting. If you enjoyed our experiment, subscribe to our channel and let us know in the comments if any of you have observed ants in nature. Don't forget to hit the like button and soon we'll show you another exciting video.